This is one of the projects I built last year that I'm most proud of, but I didn't show it on the channel because it was a present for someone. But now that they got it, I'd like to show it to you. It's a chest from the Zelda games, and in this video I'll show you how I made it. But first, why I made it. This Christmas, I signed up for Reddit Secret Santa, which is also known as the I hope Bill Gates is my Secret Santa lottery. Everyone fills out an online questionnaire, and then you get matched with somebody, and somebody else gets matched with you. The person who I was matched with was big into music, and was also a huge fan of video games, especially Pokemon and Zelda. One of the questions was, what's your favourite video game? And my match answered Minish Cap for the Game Boy Advance. And although he still had his Game Boy Advance, he had lost his copy of Minish Cap. I ended up sending my match three different gifts. One was a guitar pedal I made. I did a live stream of all of this if you want to watch back on it. My wife made the next one. It's this amazing cross-stitch of Toon Link. She says she hasn't cross-stitched in 20 years, but if I knew she could do this, I definitely would have been asking her to make me stuff. And then finally, the chest. I wanted to make all the presents for my match this year, but I thought I'd be able to replace Minish Cap, and luckily enough I found it for really cheap on eBay, and I thought the chest would be a cool way of presenting it. To make the chest, I started by designing the shell of it in Tinkercad and 3D printing it. I'll make these files available in the description. The base of your chest when you're finished printing should look like this. Next we'll move on to the wood part of the chest. I use popsicle sticks for this. I cut the round part off the popsicle stick using a pliers. I then placed the popsicle stick against the base of the chest and measured where I was going to need to take my next cut. The popsicle stick should fit flush with the base of the chest when you're finished, so if you need to make adjustments to this later, do. When you're happy with the fit of the first one, I would then use that as a guide to cut the rest of them. I don't know if it was just my pack of popsicle sticks, but some of them weren't straight, and you should avoid using these as they'll cause a gap in your chest. On the base I was left with a gap too small for a full stick to fit in. I used a blade to cut one of the sticks so that it was thin enough to fit in the gap. Put the cut side of the stick against the edge of the chest as it won't be seen. Put a couple of pieces of masking tape on the back of the sticks just to hold them all together. Repeat the same steps for all four sides of the chest. I'm just using blue tack here to hold them in place. You only need to go up as high to cover the gap. You don't need to go the whole way up to the top of the chest. Check all the sides to make sure that there's no significant gaps. A small one is okay, but you don't want to be able to see through it. Making the lid of the chest curved seemed like a good idea at the time, but it added some complexity. The supports didn't break off clean, so I needed to use a Dremel to tidy this up a bit. And the popsicle sticks were a little bit wide for the edge of the curve, so to save myself the trouble of cutting these, I borrowed some coffee stirrers from my local shop. I ended up using the coffee stirrer at the two edges and then one in the middle. And again, just so we can see what it looks like, I'm holding it in place with blue tack and masking tape. Next, to make the wood look a little less popsicle sticky, I painted it with coloured varnish. This step is obviously optional, but I think it gives the chest a much nicer look. I'd first recommend painting some scrap popsicle sticks to see how it looks, and also to see how many layers you're going to need, but I think I only used one. While we're waiting for the varnish to dry, let's move on to the hinges. My printer's not the best, so I had to clean up the excess filament, I had to re-drill out the holes using a 2mm drill bit, and then also I needed to file down the piece after I did the drilling. Next you want to put the two pieces of the hinges together and slide through a piece of 1.75mm filament. Cut it so that there's a small bit of filament sticking out both sides. And then using your soldering iron flatten out one of the sides. Just do one side of each hinge, we'll do the other side later. After the varnish is fully dry on the popsicle sticks we want to stick them to the chest. Apply super glue to the inside of the chest like I'm doing here. You don't need to put a huge amount of it, just a little bit will be enough to stick the wood down. You then want to put down the base section of the popsicle sticks. Try not to drop it on the glue like I did here. Apply a small bit of pressure until the glue sets. Repeat the same steps for the four sides. Just to hold the walls up while the glue is drying, again I use some blue tack. 
And then finally, I applied a layer of super glue to the top of the wall between the wall and the chest just for an extra bit of strength. Next, we want to glue down the wood for the lid. It's the same as we did for the base. We want to put a bit of super glue either side and then place the stick down on the glue and hold it there. The tape wasn't doing a great job of keeping these together, so I had to do them one by one. Again, you want to use some blue tack after it's stuck just to hold it in place till it dries. Now we're going to start assembling the chest. Put some super glue on the back of the hinge that has the two sections on it. This is the bottom one. Now we're going to stick it to the base of the chest. You then want to put the lid on the chest and hold it in place with blue tack. You then want to glue the top part of the hinge and carefully stick it on the top part of the chest in between the hinges at the bottom. You then want to insert your filament hinge from earlier into both sides. When the glue is fully dry, you should now have a chest with a working hinge. This part is kind of optional and I'll explain why in a minute, but take a 2cm piece of popsicle stick and glue two 1cm pieces of popsicle stick to it. Put some hot glue on the long side of the piece we just made and then you want to get a screw or anything else that a magnet will be attracted to and embed it in the hot glue. We're going to use this to help keep the lid closed as we need a magnet on the lid anyways. We're then going to super glue this piece to the inside of the chest at the opposite side of the hinge. You'll also notice that I have a magnet in the lid held in with blue tack. Test that it closes okay with the blue tack and then when you're happy with it, hot glue the magnet in place instead. If positioned correctly, the chest lid should kind of snap close. And just to make the whole thing a little bit sturdier, I applied some more hot glue to the part the screw is attached to. And then you just want to flatten out the other side of the hinge that we left from earlier. And once you've done that, that's the physical build of the chest completely finished. You can skip adding the electronics if you want. I think the chest looks pretty good on its own, but if you've gone this far, you may as well add the lights and the sound. It really adds a lot to the chest. The electronics of the chest contain the following. The jingle is played on a passive speaker by an A-Tiny 85. The A-Tiny is a good fit for the project because it's very small and also it's well suited for running on batteries. For the lights, I'm using two LEDs and they each have an 100 ohm current limiting resistor. These aren't being controlled by the A-Tiny. When the circuit receives power, they'll light up. The circuit is powered by a lithium ion battery. It's actually one from a Nintendo DS Lite. I used to repair these years ago and I've loads lying around. I also thought it'd be pretty fitting to use a DS battery given what we're building. The battery is connected to a TP4056 lithium battery charger. This is so my match could recharge the chest if it ever ran out of battery. It's also important to note that this charging circuit comes with protection. This is to stop the battery dropping below 2.4 volts which can damage the cell. Normally you'd have to regulate the voltage coming from a battery as it depletes over time the voltage will reduce, but the A-Tiny has such a flexible voltage input that the entire range of voltage is going to be okay for it. The real star of the show though is this guy here and he's called a reed switch. A reed switch is a switch that changes state when a magnet is held near it. The most common form of reed switch is called a normally open switch. This means that when there's no magnet nearby, the circuit is open so nothing can flow through. You can also get dual reed switches that have both types included, a normally open and a normally closed. We want to use a normally closed reed switch because if you think of the magnet that we put in the lid of the chest, when that moves away from it, we want the circuit to turn on. If we look back at the diagram, I'm using the reed switch to connect the whole circuit to ground. So when the magnet's nearby, there's no ground connection, so it's not a complete circuit, so it shouldn't be using any power. There is a limited amount of current you can pass through a reed switch, but mine was rated to 600 milliamps, and my circuit only used about 100 max. I added a regular toggle switch to the positive connection to the circuit, just as a failsafe in case anything went wrong with the reed switch or the magnet. I found a sketch online written by a GitHub user called Ian Klatsko that played the Zelda jingle on a passive speaker when you pressed a button. I made some minor changes to this where the jingle only played once on startup. I'll link to both Ian's sketch and my sketch in the description below. Steps for programming the AtTiny can be found on my previous AtTiny video where I cover building a shield for programming the chip. Next, we're going to take some protoboard and cut it so that it fits in the chest. Remember that you want to cut a notch out for the piece that we added the screw to earlier. Now we want to start adding the components to the board. 
It doesn't really matter where most of them go once it's wired up as per the diagram earlier, but one thing that is important is the read switch because we want it to sit in this slot here. Place the rest of the components on the board. If you're putting anything in the chest, keep testing that everything fits okay, especially with the lid closed. When you're happy, solder it all up. This is what my circuit looked like when it was almost fully finished. All that was left to do was add the power connections from the battery. It's not advisable to solder directly to the pins of a lithium ion battery because the heat is bad for it, but you know. So I took a pre-tinned wire and added a little bit of solder and got in and out of there as quick as I could. Then we're going to solder the two wires from the battery to the two center pins of the charging circuit. Make sure to keep the wires pretty short as space is pretty tight in there. You then want to solder a wire from the toggle switch to the positive pin of the battery circuit and from the read switch to the negative pin. Here's what my fully finished circuit looked like. Now we need to sandwich all the components into the chest. It was a tight squeeze, especially the charging circuit, but it did all fit in the end. So all that there was left to do was to turn it on, put the game in, wrap it up and send it on its way. I put a good bit of effort into the gifts I sent my match this year, but he genuinely seemed to love them. The post he made on Reddit gifts was really nice, but he sent me an even nicer private message thanking me for all the things. Hopefully you found this project interesting. I've definitely made more technically complicated projects in the past. From an aesthetics point of view though, this project's definitely my favourite. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to help. Thanks a lot.